Yes. Okay. Shalom Thank you everyone for joining. If you're not uh, speaking, please mute yourself. It makes the audio work a little bit better. Um, this uh, week, we're celebrating the birthdays of uh, Danielle Reber, actually, whose birthday is today. Michal David Freeman, whose birthday is today as well. And this week is the birthday of Yisrael Koch, Miriam Almog, and tomorrow, night, tomorrow is the birthday of Yossi Reber. We have a year of bracha, uh, v'atzlacha, begashmius, v'ruchnius, and this Shabbat, this upcoming Shabbat, is the Shabbat which blesses the month of Sivan. And before we enter into what that means, I'll tell you uh, something a little lighter, maybe a little bit off color. There were some cannibals in Africa. They noticed this El Al flight coming down. And the chief and all the cannibals get together like, wow, it's so exciting. A whole plane of people coming down. These cannibals are all excited. And the chief tells everybody, as soon as they come down, we're going to roast them, get the fire ready. We're going to have them. It's, it'll have a delicious meal. And one of the cannibals raises his hand, chief, usually before we eat our dinner, uh, before we eat any one who comes our way, we, we fatten them up for a couple of months first. How come we're not we're veering from protocol? So the chief said, these people are unique. They eat each other. So therefore, we've got to do this a little quicker. The Jews at the foot of Mount Sinai looked at the chariot of God that descended when God gave us the Torah. The anniversary, of course, is, is coming next week, Friday. And they looked at the chariot of God and they noticed that the angels had flags. There were various camps that each angel was assigned to. And the Jewish people liked this. They wanted this. And they thought God must be showing us this for a reason. And therefore, when the Torah was given and the shofar was blown and the event had uh, the magic of the giving of the Torah, that event was fully finished. Then the Jewish people came to Moses and they said, we want flags too. What's the meaning of having flags? So the idea of having a flag is that you have self-expression. You express yourself your way, the way you feel best to serve God. And no one can take that away from you. You serve Hashem according to the way that you understand to serve Hashem. That's the meaning of having a flag. Having your specific way that you serve God. And that's important. God wants us to have color. He wants us to use the skill set and the soul energy that God gave us in order to fulfill our mission in this world. That's true. But because of that, there is a fine line between focusing on what your soul mission is and honoring someone else's soul mission. And it's not always the same. Everyone has a different soul mission and things change. And sometimes someone's so consumed with what they believe is something that's really important. And because of that, they don't necessarily honor another person's path because they're so into the way that they feel is the best way to, to live. Which brings us to today's news. Everyone's excited about today's news with good reason. The president of the United States made an important announcement, something that we as Jews are really excited about. Prayer is not considered something which is non-essential, it's considered essential. That is something we believe in. That's something that is exciting that to hear that from, from the world, recognizing how important prayer is, it's, it's, it's inspiring. At the same time, as Jews, we know there's something even more essential than prayer. What's more essential than prayer? The Torah tells us that we need to guard our health. Protecting your life is even more essential than prayer. And therefore, it's not that we want to sacrifice our lives for the sake of prayer. On the contrary, we would sacrifice prayer for the sake of the protection of our lives. So there's, a, there's again, another fine line between protecting our health and, and being able to pray. And you want to be able to accomplish both goals in a way that, does, that there's no risk. But there is something even more essential than guarding your life. 
yes, there's something even more important than protecting your life. Let's go back to the story in the Talmud about Hillel. Talmud says that Hillel was once approached by this non-Jew who asked him if he would consider converting him if he taught him the entire Torah on one foot, then he would want to convert. And he, would, and he asked Hillel, please teach me the whole Torah. So Hillel says, I can teach you the whole Torah on one foot. The whole Torah is what's hateful unto you. Don't do it to anybody else. And what about the rest? The rest is commentary. That's what Hillel told him. What Hillel said doesn't seem to fit in with what Pirkei Avot tells us. Pirkei Avot tells us the Torah stands on three pillars, on Torah, on prayer and on kindness. There are three pillars that hold up the Torah. And in fact, that's what this would-be convert was asking Hillel. According to the commentaries of the Talmud, he wasn't asking what are the more important principles in Torah. He was asking, I know there's three, but if there could only be one, which one would it be? That's what he's asking Hillel. So what was Hillel's response? What was Hillel's response then? If there are three pillars, how come he switched it to having one pillar? What does that mean? And especially Shammai, felt that this guy was off. Shammai, when he asked Shammai to convert him with the same request, Shammai threw him out. He says, you're, you're, you're trying to cut up the Torah. We can't accept this. So what did Hillel see in this person and in this question? And he, what was his response? What's more essential than life? Well, who defines what is, what's on, what is essential? We have a Torah. And the Torah tells us what is important, what's not important. The Torah tells us that life is essential. An entire Torah is pushed aside, except for three instances, for the preservation of life. But in order to get the Torah, something had to happen first. Before we got the Torah, we arrived at the foot of Mount Sinai. And God said that now is the time I can give the Jewish people my Torah. Why? It says in the Torah, when we camped at Mount Sinai, we camped there in the singular, it says the Torah uses the word, and he camped there, although it's referring to all of us, millions, three million people about, it says he camped there because we were united like one person with one heart, one man with one heart. So although there are all kinds of people and everyone has their own way of serving God, but we were, and everyone has their differences, we let all that go, we were like one person with one heart. That's what happened when, at the foot of Mount Sinai. What, what did God respond to that? Ah, now I can give you my Torah. Now we could talk about hierarchy and essentials and non-essentials. But before to even get into the discussion, before to receive the Torah, you ha there has to be unity. The Avas Yisrael, the love of our fellow Jew, is what brings the presence of God in our lives. As we say every day in our prayers, bless us, our Father, all is one. I'll tell you an incredible story. Rabbi Hutler, Rabbi of Etz Jacob, Angazunt, uh, he's the son in law of the Zile Rebbe. One of the Zile Rebbe's was living in Soviet Russia. His name was Gedalia Moshe Goldman. Gedalia Moshe Goldman, as many other pious Jews in Russia, happened very often, unfortunately, was arrested for his activity in keeping the Torah. And he was there with many other Jews, unfortunately. And one Shabbat morning, he was called to the Nachalnik. He was called to the head officer in this particular prison camp together with another Jew. The Nachalnik says to them, we reviewed your files and we figured out that you are actually serving longer sentences than you need to. You guys are free to go. You're free to go right now, you're free to go. Sign on this paper and you're free. So Rabbi Goldman said, I, I can't sign right now. I'm, it's my Sabbath, I'm not allowed to sign. It's forbidden. You know, the Torah tells us to preserve our lives. And he thought to himself, I could handle this. I could be in prison a little longer. I'll, I'm, a, I'm able to survive. I'm young enough and strong enough that this will not kill me. So I am not going to uh, sign the paper. So the other Jew who was with him, brought to the Sinchalnik's office, wasn't so religious. And uh, the Chalnik gets furious at Rabbi Goldman. He says to Rabbi Goldman, you're never going to go out of prison. You're not going to sign when I ask you to sign. You'll never go out of prison. So the other Jew says, listen, I'll sign for me. I'll sign for him. Let him, let him go out of prison. Don't worry, I'll sign for him. But Rabbi Goldman, the Chalnik says, okay, if you want to sign for him, I, 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 that'll, that'll work. 
Rabbi Goldman thought to himself that, uh, I'm sorry, the Nachalniks said to the other gentleman, he, who he said, you're free to go if you sign. He said, no, if you're not going to let him go, I'm not going to go either. If you won't let this rabbi go, I'm not going either. Rabbi Goldman heard that the other guy is not going to be released from prison, but on his account, he thought the other guy's older. For him, it is important to sign on Shabbat because his life is in danger. So he has to sign that paper. It's important, according to the laws of the Torah, for him to sign that paper. He has to. Shabbat Goldman says, you know what? I'm going to sign for him. I'll sign for him because he realized his life is in danger. He has to make the effort and sacrifice his Shabbat to save the other person's life. So the Chalmik is blown away. To save his own life, to let himself go free from prison, he's not going to do that. No, it's Shabbat. You can't sign. But to help the other guy, of course, we'll sign right away. So the Chalnik is blown away. He says, guys, I'll sign for both of you. Just, just go home. There's something that happened at Mount Sinai, at the foot of Mount Sinai. What happened is that we all forgot our differences. We all got together. There are a lot of people which are screaming the name of protecting lives that other people are murderers or people who aren't so careful. And there are other people which are calling those who are calling them murderers they're saying you guys are, are are in the dark you don't really know the real science the real medicine and that, and so yankel says Schmerl is a murderer and Schmerl says to yankel that you are uh, paranoid and the world returns to tohu vavo and that's not the way it's supposed to be there are is guidance there is a torah there are rabbis and there is the guidance of torah and you have to follow the guidance of torah and follow the guidance of your rabbi but if someone else is doing something different to what you're doing, don't kill them. Don't kill them. The, the path to get the Torah, the path to decide all the what's the higher, what's more essential, less essential, is to be united as one. That's how we get the light of God's face. The Talmud says the light of God's face that we're referring to in our prayers is the light of the coming of Mashiach. In order to get the Torah, in order to come to the time of Mashiach, it's not so important to guard your health it's not so important to to uh to preserve your religiosity it's not so important you know what's important to get the torah for that guarding health is important keeping the torah is important but in order to but in order to get the torah in order to have that relationship with god the god should want to give us a torah to start the relationship with god it's by us being all as one when a parent sees his children getting along there's no greater satisfaction that a parent has in seeing that unity between his children. To bring God into our lives, to bring God's blessing into our lives, the most important thing is to let go of our differences, unite as one. As the Rebbe said, this Shabbat, which had a similar setup as this present year, on the year 1986, the Rebbe said, it's a request from my soul, and even more, that we should unite together this Shabbat and talk about Jewish unity and bring more avat Yisrael, more love for our fellow Jew into our hearts, and not just into our hearts, but into our actions, into our deeds, to bring Come one with each other. That's what it's about. That's what this Shabbat is about. The Shabbat of unity. The Shabbat of togetherness. And that spirit, God willing, on Sunday night, uh, Rabbi Zions, Rabbi Reitschik, Rabbi Kesselman, and myself are going to have a night of inspiration to inspire Jewish unity in Avat Yisrael. Please join us this coming Sunday night. Before that, something which is very essential, ice cream. Rabbi Zalmi Hecht is going to be distributing ice cream, God willing, on Sunday, Mitzvah Shem, Make sure that he knows your address. He's going to visit your children and give them ice cream. Very essential. No, 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 no argument about that. Uh, this Shabbat, we are blessing the month of Sivan. And if God forbid, we are unable to get together in the shul in Jerusalem tomorrow. Let's give a blessing to each other right now. The blessing, as we say tomorrow, is, you can say this at home as well, even if you're unable to be in the Beit HaMikdash, you can still say this, the blessing, and you're supposed to also uh, be aware of the molad, the time of the birth of the new moon over Jerusalem before you say the blessing. The birth the birth of the new moon over Jerusalem actually was already. It was at 11.42 a.m. and 13 chalakim this morning. And let's give a bracha to each other. Ay, 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 ay,
Beis Yisrael, the Chaim Olisholim, the Sasei Nolasimcha, the Yeshua in the Chama.